Welcome back to the Wilkins Way. I'm your host, Sean Wilkins. Tonight, we have a special show for you guys. Former NFL star with the San Diego Chargers, Giles Tucker is in the building. This is a Jersey boy. He's out here representing, showing love. So Jersey. it's a pleasure to have him on. Giles, thanks for being on, man. Hey, man, that's well, because I appreciate you having me out here. Thank you. Of course, man. We're going to jump right into it. I know everyone wants to pick your brain as far as the NFL knowledge. We're going to, you know, we're going to jump in who looks good in the NFC, AFC. Okay. And, you know, first and foremost, though, I want you to tell the people who don't know. I know who you are. I know you very well. But for the people who don't know who Giles Tucker is, you know, just briefly your story, how you came up you know small town boy and you, you, you've inspired a lot of folks around here so I definitely want you to shed light on that uh, well you know I uh, grew up in uh, first of all I was born and raised in Morristown until the age of seven moved to Dover uh, where I met a lot of my boys including Sean um, you know from there I went on to a uh, Morristown beard after eighth grade and uh, had a nice four years there um, came an all-american and both basketball and football, had an opportunity to uh, attend Wake Forest University. Uh, went there and did a nice little good job and uh, had an opportunity to go yeah. to the league, you know, out there as a free agent. Uh, had a 1% chance to make the San Diego Chargers, but through God's will and, you know, my God-given ability, I was able to make the team. So yeah. everything's just storybook from then. Yeah, I mean, tell us about, like, your journey at Wake Forest. I know, like, oh. um, you were a captain at one point. Oh. You, I, I know you got some jewelry oh, yeah. being at Wake Forest. You know, honestly, to tell the streets, before we even got to Wake Forest, man, it was a, it was a journey uh, to get there because, you know, we have all these standardized tests, and so I, I took the te uh, test a few times, the SAT, ACT. I wasn't uh, successful at it, so I had to take a year over there at Hargrave Military Academy, mm -hmm. which changed my whole life. Cause over I was, in Virginia, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, Virginia, you know what I'm saying? I was down there with some boys who uh, who really elevated my game, let's yeah, say that, yeah, yeah. since day one of being there, you know? I was out there with the Amad Brooks, number one national player of the year, nice. you know what I mean? So nice. I was out there with some ball players. So after that, went on to uh, Wake Forest, and um, four years away Wake Forest, man, look, let me tell you. We actually had to do our academics. <laughs> ACC. ACC. We had, all play. You know, you know what I'm saying? Tobacco Road, we had to do our academics over yeah. there. So, you know, it took uh, about three and a half years of summer school while I was in school uh, just just to, get my, just to get myself together. You know what I'm saying? Elevate my knowledge, not only in football, but around society and, you know, dealing with the media people out that way. Yeah. I love hearing that, cause not, you know, not to judge, I'm not throwing shade on anything, but, you know, especially in the NCAA with the basketball side, you see these guys, a lot of one and dones, you know, that's the culture now, it's been Kentucky, Calipari, he's yeah. telling he's telling parents in, in the living room doing recruitment, hey, oh, yeah. your, your boy come here for one year, yeah. we're going to get him paid. Because at the end of the day, I mean, tell you the truth, I mean, that's that's... That's just what it is. Yeah. It's time to get paid. 19 year old millionaires. 19 that's old, the culture right now. That's, that seems to be the culture, but at the end of the day, you got the kids, you know what I'm saying, growing up in the AAU, mm -hmm. which is allowing the opportunity to see the side of the professional, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Seeing that you got to travel from here to there. Mm -hmm. Also, while being in high school, you got to do your work. You got to be yeah. account You got to be accountable and re responsible for the things that you do have. So I got to be at practice. I got to be back for school. I got to mm -hmm. do this. I got to do it. You know, it all plays a part. So when you, you that young 19-year-old boy who's playing basketball is seeing a lot of Places, a yeah, lot of you ball, ain't lying. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of people, you know, myself included, fans exactly. and people just spectating from the, from the couch. Exactly. You know, we turn to ESPN, we turn to ABC, and, and we just watch the game, and we watch the guys hit the game winning shots, and we watch the guys average 15, 16, and go on to the draft. But a lot of people, you know, and, I, and of course, you can shed light on this. They don't know, like, you know, you go to the locker room, you shower up, you change clothes, you gotta go, you gotta go back to your dorm, and, and you got like a paper to oh, hammer man, out. Yeah. I think a lot of people really underestimate the culture of the student athlete because I feel as though they see or the media you know publicizes those athletes who you know are just athletes yeah you know we don't really get the chance to publicize those who are student athletes mm -hmm. which a majority of the team players you know what I'm saying but they're mm -hmm. not just star players all the time yeah for that being said you know your quarterbacks they a student athlete, yeah. Supposedly to the media, you yeah, know, exactly. So, so social media society, <laughs> uh -huh. but um, other than that, man, yeah, you got, you know, you got your certain type of players. Yeah, because you know, you got guys like Derrick Rose. I mean, and I'm not talking trash. You know, this is, you know, this is public record. Derrick yeah. Rose 
Ty, you know, Tyreek Evans, guys that like it was it was made public. Like them guys barely barely you know passed their SATs. Yeah. You know they you know they should have been ineligible. Mm-hmm. Coach Calipari kind of you know bending some rules, got them playing, and then you know they're in the third year in the NBA, multi-millionaires, and then those, now those reports come out. I mean, well, but when they're making millions right. for their school, right. it's everything's it's on the hush. It's even, it's even before that. You already making Nike day money. When you're doing Very the ABCD camp, Very you know true. the AAU is sponsored been, by Adidas. No, no disrespect, that. but these these kids is getting a whole lot more sneakers than them boys who are all Americans that get cleats. You feel me? Mm. So the people who are doing the football, we don't get as much as them boys who are playing basketball. Them boys is getting 10, 12 pairs of sneakers sent to their house as youngins. 14, this is true. Fourteen is, through I eighteen. I actually know that for a fact. You know That's what I'm true. saying? I, I witnessed this with my yeah. own eyes growing up. So I mean, I mean, and yourself, you were in the AAU circuit yeah, coming yeah. up, right? Yeah, I was in the AAU circuit a little bit. You know, <laughs> I, I had an opportunity. You know, what I'm saying, play basketball mid level D one. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but I chose. I had chose Wake Forest because I was supposed to go there and play two sports. Mm-hmm. But when I got there, my football coach made me choose one. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I you made the right choice. I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you made the right choice. Yeah, you went on, name. you went on to the league and did some great things. So you definitely made the right choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we tried. <laughs> and so I mean, talk about that. I mean, I know me personally. I grew up playing playing the Madden video game. I grew up, you know, being a diehard football fan, playing, watching. You know how we grew up. Mm-hmm. We, we didn't grow up in this Xbox nah. video games for ten hours nah. a day. Me and this brother nah. grew up. We we throwing the book bag down and, and we going out playing touch football on the street until the lights went off and our moms were screaming at the top of their lungs Absolutely. for us to come inside. Because I remember that's I, our era. I definitely remember parents getting mad at me because I'm going to knock on everybody's door to go play. Yeah, you know what that's I'm our that's era. A... Now it's the it's the Instagram, it's the phone, it's the yeah. it's the X. But you know it, it's the it's the technology era. You can't knock it. It's just a different time. Boy, but I, um. I'm I like, remember. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go nah, ahead. I remember like playing Madden and and and, and, and all those games and, and dreaming about this. So and I know you. I know you did the same. So I mean, you know, I want you to get get your point out what you're about to say. But after that, I want you to like talk about like the draft process. For those who don't know, you went undrafted yeah. and you were you were signed right away. You had a couple teams and you you know you were able to pick and choose. You were signed right away, but. I mean, nerve-wise and the, the excitement, the build-up to that, how was that whole experience like? So, first of all, after our loss in that Orange Bowl, after we won the ACC championship, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying, I went on to uh, Tampa, Florida to go do my training, uh, which was very intense. I went out there at 276, and after I got finished training, I was 258. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, when, when I had my pro day, I, ran, I went out there and ran a 4.51 and a 4.58. Pretty much 260. Yeah. My broad jumped like a 10.6. My vert was like a 33. Mm-hmm. But my, my, my L drill was a 6.66. And I don't like that number, but yeah, you know, yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was, I was moving out there. Then I did the long shuttle, and honestly, the long shuttle, I had the second best time compared to the DBs, mm-hmm. wide receivers. Mm-hmm. Out of anybody who was at the combine, I had the second best time. Uh-huh. But uh, other than that, man, you know what I'm saying? The travel to there, you know, to get to that to get to that road is just something that people just will never understand because they'll never understand the road that I took just for the simple fact I took four years of running around the track, you know what I'm saying, while all my boys was playing because I was too fat to play. But I practiced yeah, every yeah. day, Sean, you know. Yeah, I, I know. practiced every day. I definitely I practiced every day for four years, you know what I'm saying? Didn't get an opportunity to play as a little young and so And I remember when kids were going home, <laughs> you know, your father had you on the track. Yeah, So a lot of people don't know, you know, and you know, you have you have your naysayers and your haters out there, but as the saying goes, you know, if you have haters, you're doing something right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you have your people, you know, I mean, God forbid, if anyone calls you lucky, you know, they're just foolish. But you have your people like, oh, you know, I was just as good as him. I could have did it. I could have had these looks. My school was hating. My coach hated on me. And, you know, it's a lot of excuses. and It's a lot of guys in their feelings. But me personally, and I'm right not there. trying to, you know, toot my own horn, I've never been a hater for the sole reason that you don't know someone's true grind. I know you personally, but I didn't. I wasn't there when you were putting in work. Yeah. You know, like Drake said, you wasn't with me shooting Shoot. in the gym. Well. I wasn't with you running on the track. I wasn't with you, you in the weight room. I was on them hills. I People don't hills. know like the extra time mm-hmm. that you, not even just you. Yeah. I was telling you know my little cousin Noah, you know who who has inspirations to play professionally. 
you want you know you want to be a star you want to be different you have to train different mm -hmm. you have to think different you can't be average that's the first oh go back to that you got to think different <laughs> It don't matter about your God-given ability if you're not able to think outside the box. Some guys are not mentally capable of doing this. And that's why the ones who are mentally capable of doing it are doing what they do. Yeah, absolutely. Because you've seen the ones before me, they had an opportunity, and that's who I learned off of. Yeah, I mean, when we came we, up, we saw so many people come through the so system. Much this guy was supposed to be yeah. this. That guy was supposed to be you that. You already know. We so, grew up around talented brothers. That's and exactly what I'm saying, man. It we, separates the ones who made it, the ones who didn't. You know, mm -hmm. people don't know it's a small percentage in the world, in the country one, of guys who make it. One percent. You know, I think it's like a, it's a small percentage of even the, co the college athletes. Yeah. There, there's hundreds of thousands of Division One one percent athletes, and 1% <laughs> make it professional. 1%, just like the 1% is of the world. Yeah, 1%. Yeah. So it's like what separates you, what makes you different, and, that, you know, that's one of the things I like to hammer home to these young kids who are out here, you know, with, prof with pro inspirations. I say, you know, me and you were, um, you know, behind closed doors had a conversation and I definitely want to touch on this. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a lot of kids who want to do it and you know, they want to do it. You ask them why? I want to be LeBron James. Why? What do you know about LeBron James besides that he averages 25, 26 and four MVPs, two, two championships. A lot of these kids don't know, you know, behind closed doors, behind the scenes, what it takes to perform at this level and, and even performance aside what it takes to live at this level a lot of people don't know how to balance a checkbook true you true. know a lot of kids and that's why i respect the nfl for what they do with the rookie symposium you know because you have guys like you know hall of famer chris carter who goes on and talks to these rookies like listen i was an alcoholic yeah i was a brett Favre. i was a pill popper yeah you know this is stressful you know you guys turn on sports center and you watch the highlights and and, and then you and you turn you, you turn the you know, you turn to your, to your next TV show you want to watch. Yeah. We don't get to turn this off. When you're a pro athlete, you live that. This is a real life. You know what I'm saying? Uh, being given that opportunity to go in there and play that game for any of us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, I just feel as though, yeah, we get a lot of, you know, ridicule for the things that we do do. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot of things that you don't get a chance to see. Just like you said, that, that working out. The, the time with the family, the time that you don't get with the family. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that, uh, that's big. Just, just this, um, the simple sheer fact that I'm always on a go. All of us are always on a go. No different than any other man or woman out here working. Yeah, but, the, but it's at but another the, level. Exactly. To set aside, to set aside what we do different, you're spending an immense amount of time on film, mm -hmm. on your body, training your body, taking care of your body. Mentally, you got to do any and everything that there is to broaden your mind so when you out there you're not just stuck in one place or on that field court mm -hmm. rink wherever you at whatever you're doing mm -hmm. it's just the simple fact that you have to tune in and put everybody else to the side that's what I had to do growing up personally I had a lot of peers who didn't really want me to go to Morristown beer which is a prep school in Morristown with New Jersey um, they didn't want to see me go there that was knocking me for going there or wanting to go there. Yeah, why are you for, leaving your just, hometown? Not, why are you even selling that. out? Not even that. Let's be real talk. They, oh, why are you going to that white boy school? Mm -hmm. Why you got to go there? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Why can't you go over here? First of all, y'all suck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? First of all, they're not even like, looking at yeah. oh, This is the best move for your yeah, career, for my, your life. For my life. We don't care yeah. about, you know, exactly. the next man. Yeah, opinion. I don't care about going to school and playing ball with you boys. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to go to school and go. Play ball. I'm trying to get really. my education. And made everybody for. who knew me and was around me, I feel as though the people who do make it, we all got the same type of heart in a different type of way. Something. Yeah. It's something that we got inside of us. It's just mm -hmm. a little different. We don't have that no quit. That's it. Yeah. That's the difference. You know? We found, don't quit. I found it interesting what you said too about like you know the work you have to put in your body. Like your bodies are literally investments. Like yeah. how they say a boxer, his hands yeah. are registered. Yes. A NFL player, an NBA player, their bodies are investments. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you got guys like, you know, recently on the news, Jason Pierre-Paul, JPP on the Giants, this guy blows his hand off. Hand off. Wanting to play with firework, firecrackers, 
down in Florida. I had a wonderful time watching the fireworks. <laughs> they were beautiful by me watching them. Not That's even all I need. I, I don't want. I've never been one of them dudes that want to stand close yeah, to. Like them. I don't even. I, I throw the poppers, but I'm not trying to sit here and do all this fireworks. Yeah, I'm a little country boy too. I just let me go chop some wood or something. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. My young boy Noah, he he had me laughing. He made a good point. You know, I we, I was talking to him about it because I want him to understand like. You know, Jason Pierre Paul just ruined a sixty million dollar deal. He was he was going back and forth with the Giants front office. He was they, supposed to get paid on Monday. <laughs> yeah. You know, after after you did after what the you holiday. Did, after, right after the holiday, I'd have been sitting down like, yo, I already know my agent called me. I yeah. already know he called me. I'd have been waiting for my flight. When my flight leave back bro, to New York. If anything, I'd have already been in New York, bro. It's the, fourth, it's the 4th of July to have my whole family there knowing what's getting ready to take place. In my opinion, here's where he messed up. The New York Giants, Jerry Reese, the Giants general manager, they tried to offer him this during the season. Jason Pierre, I don't know if this was his agent's deal, his agent's plan. You know, that's none of my business what him and his agent do, so it might not be him. I know a lot of, a lot of times these guys' agents advise them, you know, listen, let's hold out, let's wait. True. He waited the whole season, went back and forth. I guess he was trying to negotiate more uh -huh, money. Uh -huh. Now he finally verbally agrees to the $60 million that he was going back and forth for the whole year and, and blows his hands off. Go do something crazy. And now they don't even know if they're going to keep you on the team. At all. Because now if, if they just decide to cut ties with him, it's nothing. It's nothing. Because you, you, you was coming up on a contract. And, they, and guess what? They're going to go find another defensive end. You're replacing He's already him. there. <laughs> he might have already got Ladies drafted. and gentlemen, he's already there. <laughs> Let you know about this game. One get hurt, next man. Yeah, up. just he like there was up. a straight hand before a JPP. Yeah, it's all Wally Pippet, whoever it is, whoever yeah. get the opportunity. Yeah. Get damn Wally Pippet that thing. Take <laughs> over. Feed your family. I feel so I don't mean to laugh at the brother situation. No. I heard that um, him and his family have decided to go the route that um, he's going to amputate a couple fingers. Okay. So I felt horrible about that. But listen, at the end of the day, it's like it's like feeling horrible about it's like feeling horrible for Plexico for shooting himself in the leg. Personal. How bad can you feel? You walking into the club with a gun, you playing with fireworks. Nah, you right. You right, but honestly, Plexico is a good dude, by the way. Yeah, I, I believe it. I did a lot of training with him down there at uh Pete Bomberito down there in Miami. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh he was a good dude. He's from the he's from the Miami, Florida area. Yeah, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. He, he's a country boy too. He's just a real cool character. I, I mean, I just couldn't understand what, what was going on, but at the end of the day, I do understand what was going who on. Who carries a gun in sweatpants? But yeah, you're right. Who carries a gun in sweatpants? <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? Who, who, by you being who in you the are, pocket. By you being who you are, where you at, doing whatever you need to do, you need to protect yourself at all times. Mm -hmm. You a figure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's not like he was going in there to cause problems with anybody. Mm -hmm. He protecting himself. Like my young boy Nova said, he was like, he was like Jason Pierre Paul could have had could have paid someone to, to light the fireworks for. <laughs> true. And true. Plexico could have paid someone to ha to have and to, he, to hold think, the ratchet and watch his back. True. If I'm right, I think he might have had somebody there with him. But he might have. At the end of the day, what boy you know gonna walk around from them type of places without their stuff? Yeah. I'm just saying. And that's when it, you know it's set like you said. You, it's a different mindset. A different Thank mind. God, Plexico. Got his game winning catch in the Super Bowl. He got his ring before that incident. But yeah, it's like, that could have, yeah, that could have, it potentially it did ruin his career. He made a comeback. True. God, forgive me, y'all. I forget with what team. He, he made a comeback. How did he come back to the Steelers? It was, oh, this is going to bother me now. I forgot the team he came back with. But he, basically, he got, he, the comeback didn't work out. True. You know what I'm saying? Bottom, bottom line, the comeback was unsuccessful, and that you know that's what we that's what we remember Plexico as. You ask you ask a teenager, Plexico Burris, first thing that comes to your mind, they're gonna say, you know, shoots one, himself in the leg. They're not gonna talk about Super Bowl winning catch. It's one or two. It's one or two. If yeah. People, if they're really fans and they fan fanatics. Yeah. If you really know the game, you're gonna it's say, gonna be, it's you're gonna gonna be say more, game winning catch. It's gonna be more than that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you know. With the people out here today, you know, it's a little different. They're going to tell you he shot himself. Uh -huh. Oh, what a crazy dude. But they're not going to talk about the way that man still feeds his family off of what he did Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. He made you know millions of dollars the playing the, the game. Edu the education that that man got while doing the things that he did. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Hey, can't put that past people. But, you know, if they yeah. want to remember for that, let them remember for that. I, I, remember, you, I remember that man as a great family man, as a great ball player. Absolutely. And you have your negative people that go, uh, are going to talk about the gunshot. Oh, well, you know. And you, Let them do what they yeah, do. Yeah, you know, we, we can't control them. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> and so that kind of segues me into the next point I wanted to bring up with you. It's like, 
you know, how you were saying that you've trained with Plaxico, mm -hmm. you know him personally. Yeah. You know, talk about how, like, I've heard, you know, obviously I've never played a second of professional football, but I've heard, like, more so in the NFL than any other pro league that the guys kind of treat it like a fraternity. True. Like the NFL is like a brotherhood. And, you know, when, you know, and there's, you know, for an example, when Ray Rice was going through his situation. I don't condone no man hooking off on a woman. Please nah, don't, yeah, don't don't misconstrue my words. True, but, true. you know, I thought it was something how when he did his press conference to say that he's sorry and he accepts his punishment, the entire Ravens team was at the facility standing behind him. What? You had guys who went to Rutgers. You know, just the whole NFL was like, listen, we're not going to talk about what he did wrong, but we support him. He He's sorry, and we have his back. And not even just Ray, you know, Plexico, when he went through his thing, Michael Vick, when he went through his dog fighting situation, they actually did prison time for that. You know, you saw guys just rally around it. And, I, you know, I love seeing the brotherhood side of, of professional sports. You guys try to knock each other's head off, True. you know, inside the white lines, you yeah. know, you know, um, after the coin toss, but off the field, it's like a fraternity. It's a brotherhood. For the most part, that that most definitely a, a, a brotherhood. Um, when off the field, you know what I'm saying, it's a whole lot different than being on. Just for the simple fact, uh, you got certain people who have different caliber of living. Honestly, let's be let's be just be yeah. You got some wild cards out you there. Got, you, you got, got some homebodies. Boy, boy, you got the wild cards and homebodies. And what about the in betweens? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't what, lying. What, what about the ones that's going in between? But you know, at the end of the day, um, it, it, it's just trying to make sure if you're that type of person, you're gonna make sure the next one coming in has an opportunity to eat like you ate. Mm -hmm. But True. if you're a selfish individual, you know what I'm saying, you're not going to care about this person who's coming in because you think he's just going to come for your spot. Not, yeah. knowing, not knowing that I'm not coming for your spot. Father time is. Exactly. You know and what I I'm heard saying? that's a big issue with the quarterback position. Yeah. You've had guys like Brett Favre. You know, Brett Favre has verbally said, I'm not helping this guy behind me. Yeah. And some quarterbacks, I, you know, they'll, they'll take the rookie drafted and they'll take the young guy behind them and kind of put their arm around them. NFL legend Brett Favre has said, I'm not helping the guy on the death chart behind me. But why, 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 honestly, I ask myself, why did he have to? Because whoever they had yeah, he's after, not a coach. whoever they had after him was a first round draft pick. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. That's who it was. It was a big deal with him and Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers said they had a shaky relationship. You feel me? Because it, people forget Aaron Rodgers is considered one of the, one of, if not the best quarterback and in the he's league. Seen it. He sat on the bench for Sean, three years. He's seen it, Sean. Yeah, Brett knew what time it was. He seemed, uh, there's no way you can sit there and practice, go over this film. And they took him first and like, round. And be like, damn, I, I can't even make that throw no more. You feel me? That's what yeah, they, come that's on, a great bro. Point. That's you a know great what I'm point. saying? Like, and then at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying, you are getting a little older. This young boy came in. Uh -huh. All right, reps are getting there. They starting to pump him a little bit. They you already know you're getting, first you already reps. know you're getting old. Yeah. So yeah. honestly, what happened when that took place? Uh -huh. What happened when Aaron Rodgers took over? Nobody knows, but he already went into TV already. He went into TV already. Let me go sign this deal with Wrangler. Yeah. You don't even know how much money he get. Y'all don't even know how much money he getting off of that's that. That's a great point. You feel me? He was like, let me start covering my that, behind. That's it. That's yeah. why he stayed. Honestly, to me, that's why he stayed in the league longer, just so he can get endorsement deals and keep him going. Yeah, and, and you know, and, and, and two, he was selfishly going for the records. And, and, and three, why wouldn't you? Yeah. I spent my whole life to do this. I spent this. my whole life doing this. This I, is what I, I love to do. Super Bowl, I brought a Super Bowl championship to the city. And You're I right. did. And You're I, right. And I did that. And when that boy said I wouldn't be that good enough or I couldn't do it, mm -hmm. I throw too many interceptions. I take too many chances. Because it was controversial. Like, um, think about it. Aaron Rodgers sat on the bench beside, behind Brett for three years. Sure. So that means... They drafted Aaron Rodgers when Brett was still good. It wasn't he like Brett was on his last year. Why you think he liked that, though? Yeah. Why you think he liked that? And, yeah, and that, and that shows you why Aaron Rodgers is such the monster oh, he is monster. now. He sat behind Brett for three years, and he was mistreated. Yeah. Brett dogged him for three years. Well, we don't really know. Yeah, you know. You know what I'm saying? Media that's can, hearsay. Yeah, you know, media you know, the media is going to hype that up. I, I'm going to go ahead and venture out to say, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I take your word. You would know better than me. Yeah, you right. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, man. Yeah, that's good work. But I definitely, um, you know, I want to, like, give you the floor as well. I know you have a message for, like, the youth and, you know, just kind of talk to people about, you know, as of right now, you're, a, you know, unsigned free agent and you're out, you know, you come back, you get back to the community, you're from Jersey, you constantly come back to Jersey. 
I applaud you for that. I applaud you for what Appreciate you do. That, for bro. people who don't know, this man runs youth football camps at his old high school. Yeah. You know, the Giles Tucker football camps. He brings the youth in, gives them bags, shirts, shorts, and he really gives back to the community. And not everyone does that. It's not, it's not a given. I, I love the Jersey dudes like Victor Cruz, guys who do come back and do true, it. But true. for one, you don't have to. It's good if you do, but, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to. It's all about your heart. And you have a big heart for the youth, especially in this area. So I definitely just want to give you the floor and, you know, let you talk about I know, you know, like you said, coming up, you went, you know, you dealt with the naysayers and the haters and the people trying to, you know, throw throw dirt on your name and bring you yeah. down. And you yeah. don't hold, you know, you don't hold a grudge. You I still come it. back and, you know, you don't make it about the haters. You make it about the youth right now. And one thing that I was not even told by my parents that I was, you know what I'm saying, was said to me by my, uh, by my, you know, my son's mother, my girlfriend, uh, she just said to me, you know, don't do it for the haters, do it for the people who knew that you can do it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I, I know, you know, I know, you, not, not that you dwell on the haters, but you oh, recognize. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah, I do. You, you don't get it twisted. And I you're, definitely and you're, do. You're known to, uh, I know you personally, you're known <laughs> to voice your opinion and oh, every now and then go on a little rant oh, yeah. and, and, and put people in check, let them know that you see it, you hear it. Yeah, and it's not even. But just as many people hate on you, I think, you know, 10 times more people should love you, man. True that. And appreciate what you've done. True that, like, so just to touch on that, and, and, and to the youth out there, let me speak to you guys real quick. Um, I've been put in a position and had an opportunity to do things that a lot of people wish they can do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, I also didn't play with that. I also didn't take it for, uh, you know what I'm saying, for granted. Like, we do a lot of things out here. Um, I was definitely heavily into my fave. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? We always put Jesus first. Absolutely. Um, other than that, after you put Jesus first, it's all on you. Mm -hmm. It's all on you. What you want to do? Mm -hmm. So to the youth, what you want to do? Do you really want this? Do you really want to go to school? Or do you really want to be that boy on a block? Mm -hmm. That boy on a block is not making it nowhere. It's not cool to do or try to be like these people that's in the video. Now, I'm not one to sit here and say that I think I'm better than anybody or portray. I'm just telling you what I see. And I'm tired of seeing these young youth people trying to look up to these people that's doing this rap radio and all of this stuff. Listen, let me tell you something. Do like you see the people that is doing good. I know that's the hard route. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants to take the hard route. They always want to push it off and make excuses. Yeah, that's not but that's cool. how. Nah, you know what I'm saying? But that's how people make it the way they need to make it to. Take the responsibility. Do what you're supposed to do. Do your books because at the end of the day, that's what society is asking of you. You cannot go or do anything without that. Mm -hmm. And now it's to the point where you got to get a master's just to get a regular job. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be smart out here, let's really be smart. Don't talk back to the, your, you know, your peers and people who's trying to advise you to do right. Listen. That's all I ask you to do. Listen. Take the time to sit down and read this book. Read that passage. You know what I'm saying? Take the time to look at the people who were before you who failed because they can show you the path of success. That's all I ask you to do. Stop being so angry out here. Why are we angry? Don't be yeah. angry. It's a all, love. Because all anger is gonna do is make you more mad at the person that's next to you if he's doing good, just because you angry. Don't take the next person. Don't take the next person's dream away just because you don't want to work on what you got to do today. Mm -hmm. Work on whatever thing that you got to do and work on it for tomorrow and the day after that because the day has already passed. It's 1020 at night. I'm already thinking about tomorrow. I'm thinking about what I got to do better for my son as I sit here and talk to these younger youth people. You know what I'm saying? Even to my peers. I know that most of them may not respect me. Who cares, Sean? Yeah. I don't care if they respect me. Where they at? Listen, man. <laughs> I, I'm no celebrity. You know what I'm saying? I'm where, not doing anything Sean, huge. where are we at? Here. Where are we yeah, at? We're in the studio. I have people that hate on me. Who am I? You know, so I Sean Wilkins though, we know who you are. Yeah. Look where we at. But I, I I can go on rants all day. Oh, you haters, I see you haters. Listen, I rather Oh, you go on a couple rants, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you keep it official though. Yeah, I do a couple myself, but that's why I like to build yes, with sir. like minded individuals. You know, you know, you play you played, you know, a sport professionally. You've made millions of dollars to play a game. True. And that game a paid childhood for, game. That that game paid for your college education. That game has taken you around the country, around the world, and has let you experience and see things that the average man doesn't get to see off a game, and you're still young. True. You know what I'm saying? And 
that's a blessing in itself, man. True. That's a blessing in itself. I mean, there's not too much that we can say other than that, man. It, it, it just is all a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Just give praise to the Lord, you know? Absolutely. Um, that goes for everybody in this room. You know what I'm saying? We could never make it without him. It will never be who we need to be if we don't put our faith in him. Great so, point. So at the end of the day, everybody just needs to <laughs> do whatever they need to do to focus on whatever goal that they want to set for themselves. I agree. Let's not be hypocrites out here and really look in the mirror and do something about that person that's in the mirror. Mm -hmm. You know, A lot saying? of these kids want to listen to this trap music. Oh, no, what, and tra and what they, trap music, though? <laughs> everybody knows it's the same thing. Yeah, they want to watch, you know, you know, they glorify, you know, the guns and the drugs that, that they see. Yo, pull your pants up. That they see painted on, on the television screen. And, you know, me, for one, I grew up, I, I love hip-hop. I grew up in hip hop. I, I grew up in the golden era of hip hop. I did R&B. I ain't gonna lie. I did the R&B. Yeah, you know? I'm an R&B <laughs> head too. Nineties R&B, you know, that was popping back then. Still I, is. I, I'm a music fan, and you know what I'm saying. I definitely, but I, I use it as entertainment, man. I, I like artists from Jay to Nas to you know N.W.A. Pop. I can listen to Diddy dancing in the club, popping bottles, and I can listen to a. You, you know what I'm saying? A, a, a 50 Cent album talking about getting shot up nine times. Oh, I don't want to go live that life. It's entertainment to me. Yeah, it's a, it, for most part, it is entertainment. But for the other part, they for most part, some of them did live that life. I mean, 50 lived that life. We know he really got that. shot up. So we, know, we know he lived that life. <laughs> but for the others who had the opportunity to go ahead and do what they need to do, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't they really just tell the truth? Tell Absolutely. the truth, though. Tell the truth about you going to school and getting an education. all these trap rappers. Tell the truth I, I, about you going to get know, an education, 80% of them were never in a trap. Yo, you went and had an education. Some of y'all did grow up in good homes. Yeah, a lot of rappers went to college. You go on these guys' Wikipedia Come on. and tell it all. So-and-so went to yeah. Morehouse. Went oh. to, I'm like, whoa, you went to Morehouse. That's better studied, than what I did. Study good things out there. <laughs> but we portraying to be something because it's giving our dollar. Now, I'm not knocking nobody because if you're feeding your mama, do what you got to do. Yeah. Because mama the one who raised you, grandma, whoever it is, papa, whoever. I have both mine. Everybody don't have both there. Yeah. Hey, you already know my dad was a dad to a lot of people in town. Yeah. Not only was he a dad to a lot Your of people in town. dad was a really good brother. He gave, he gave a lot of people jobs to feed their family. Definitely did. Everybody not built that way, bro. I can attest to that. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Everybody not built that way. So at the end of the day, if there is somebody out there like that, yo, feed off their energy, man. It's good, yeah. it's good vibes out it's here. It's too much hate out here, yo. man. That's why I'm, my show slogan is spread love. Yo, you know spread what I'm love. Love, not hate, it's man. too much hate out here. Yeah, spread love, not hate. It's, it's always great talking to you. We got so caught up. I definitely don't want to get out. You know, we just had great dialogue naturally. I definitely want to touch on, you know, a few NFL topics. People are people will be grilling me on social media if I have you up here and we don't and we don't talk I about a few you. NFL topics. No doubt. Personally, you know, I always do a preseason pick, but to me, I don't like doing that. And I do it because all the other stations do it, but I don't have to be like them. I, I'm different. Yeah. Everyone does a I don't understand how in the world you can do a Super Bowl pick in July. Can't do that. But you you got guys doing it. Can we get through training camp? <laughs> can we even start on training camp? For the Buffalo first? Bills, we don't even know who their starting quarterback is. We don't even guys, care. Guys, guys are doing preseason picks. But, you know, I think you know, a couple teams still look strong. The Packers, they look strong. We just talked about Aaron Rodgers. They're always going to be strong because of the quarterback. Any, yeah. any team that has a good quarterback is always going to be a powerhouse. Period. But you still have to put weapons around them. Look oh, at Cam absolutely. Newton in Carolina. Hold on. I'm a Cam fan, and it's like Hold I on. could be wrong. They don't put no talent oh, around that brother. Panther Nation. Listen, Panther Nation, I'm still down in the tobacco road area. <laughs> you need to understand something. Panther Nation, y'all got a great quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he just got he paid. Did, he did just he get just paid. He just got paid big. And everybody's got something to say for him getting paid because they like, why he get paid? Yo, did not go to two consecutive playoff appearances? With no help. With no help. I'm still hearing it at home Thank with no you. help. So let me tell y'all something. That Steve man got Smith paid because he's supposed to get paid. When Steve Smith leaves, it, as a general manager, aren't you supposed to replace that man? Uh, now, granted, they drafted his brother though. from Florida State. Yeah. I like him. They got Benjamin. Benjamin I like, I like, I like Benjamin from they Florida made a, State. You know, they got Jen. Why do Tegan. no free agents ever go to no big free agent? Like, well, if I'm a big-time wide receiver free agent, like, I'm trying um, to go. I'm trying like, to go. Like, like Deshaun Jackson. I mean, Cam Newton has Come one of the bro, best he cannons had a TV in the league. Show. He can't do his TV show out there. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what it is. Come on. <laughs> you got a lot of things. Come on, think about it. And, and you know, Deshaun wanted to stay can't. in the NFC East because he had a grudge against the Chip Kelly and the Eagles. And guess what? Can't blame I'm him. also back at home. Yeah. I am at home now. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm back out that way. The New York Jets need to, you know, they, they need Giles Tucker's phone number. Hey, yo, listen. <laughs> I attempted to do that, even though my auntie do know the coach. I, I guess he said I wasn't fit, but guess what? Anybody else out there, I'm a dog. I'm still ready. Yeah. You know, I'm still ready. You I stay still, ready. I can still put down this four or five and come off this edge. I'm still hungry out here. <laughs> they still can't block me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Read up on me. I, I can still get it in. A couple fluke injuries, but it is what it is. So what are, like, the two to four teams right now, NFC, AFC, you know, do you think coming into August, coming into preseason, look really strong? You know, I can honestly sit there and say Panthers would have to be one of them. Because yeah. I know Coach Ron Rivera, and I know the type of style, yeah. you know, system Ron Rivera, running. one of your former coaches. Absolutely. And he's one of the best defensive-minded coaches in the league, if y'all mm -hmm. haven't seen it. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, they're definitely number one up there for me mm -hmm. uh, as one of the top four. Of course, we're going to have the Green Bay Packers. Mm -hmm. That's definitely my next. Tom, Tom, you know, deflate the ball, Brady. <laughs> Cheap to get all of your victories, Brady. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's man. a topic for a whole nother day. I know, day. but you know. These I mean, guys have rings. And every like, two of the four. I was there. The My two rookie year, I was there. I'm upset about this. And let me go ahead and let it out there. They had spotlights up. AFC and Championship, the AFC right? Championship yeah. game. Talk about it. They had spotlights <laughs> up in the locker room. For what? Ain't nobody taking pictures. We come back after halftime, after the game is over, the spotlights is gone. Mm. What was in these spotlights? What are you doing? What's going on, New See? England? What's going on? I That's said, a great inside I said, story. I've I never said heard something that. about it then. I said, yo, why, where the spotlights go? Everybody said it. You know what I'm saying? So what do you think was the deal with the spotlight? Come on, man, listen. Just like everything else they did with anything else. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't saying nothing to point no fingers, but come on, man. We not dumb out here. Let's put logic to this. Yeah. It's gone when we come back. Why was y'all in the locker room? Yeah, like like how did y'all get access to where? Why to was y'all in here at all? Yeah. Come on, That's bro. Crazy, man. It's a little fishy. Yo, Tom you know Brady we... has four rings, and it's like you don't want to hate on no one, but come on. You deflate the ball, and the, and the deflate the ball thing. Uh, the in Indianapolis yeah, Colts players went on Twitter and said, listen, we could have been playing with a bar of soap. Pause. <laughs> and, and, oh. and and we and, and the, the Patriots would have still blew us out. True that. You had coach players admitting that, which I love to see that. We could have been playing with a beach ball, and Tom, you know, they were just a better team. But when the Patriots beat the St. Louis Rams for their first, with Tom Brady in them first ring, and they got caught videotaping the Rams pregame. Come pre on, there should have been some kind of. They don't Penalty, ever get touched, man. Listen, they don't ever get touched. Brady's getting man. suspended four games for deflating a ball, but you, but why are you not getting sixteen? Belichick should have got sixteen for videotaping the Rams. First of all, he should have missed the whole season. Him and his coach. Unbelievable, they in man. cahoots together. Now, as you know, that's just that's they just potentially my robbed you of a ring, bro. Hey, man, they did <laughs> rob me of a ring, man. But you know, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just praying my Cowboys can do something. I'll put it out there now, for those the, who follow me and know me. I'm a diehard Cowboy Dez Nation fan. has band. got to be one of the best receivers in the league, and they need to pay that man. Yeah, they just, listen, just pay the man. Pay the man. I hate when they talk about heated contract. Like, what's heated? There's nothing heated if about Des it. If Bryant and his agent walk into the room, what can be heated about their negotiation? Like, check it. If I want if I want to leave Dallas, I'm gonna go get paid whatever I want. And that was a, a catch, by the way, everybody at home. That and was it was a, it, it was a catch. <laughs> um, and you don't have to be a fan of a team listen. to understand football, and that was a catch. Giles, man, we, me, and you have talked. Off camera, I'm gonna have to have you back on. Oh, you know, I, it was a pleasure. Okay. Before we go, I mentioned my young my young bull a couple times on camera. I have Noah. Noah, come in the shot real quick. Stand next shot, to baby. Giles. Come in the shot, baby. I got my young boy. Is Noah in the shot? We got oh. Noah. Yeah, I got my Noah, young boy so. Noah Heath with me. He's yeah. a big name down in Carolina, country boy. Look out for him. And you know this man. This. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Carolina connection. Y'all oh, right. supposed to I talk mean, about that. My bad. Yeah, y'all supposed to see. <laughs> so you know, young Noah was looking forward to meeting Giles. I wanted him to come to the studio, see what we do, see this production. And Noah, I'm gonna let you carry us out. You get to ask Giles one question. No hold me and you ain't even talk about this. You get that if Giles is okay with it, you get to ask him whatever you want, man. The floor is yours. From a, a Noah's 12, he'll be 13 next month. From a 13-year-old perspective, what would you like to ask a professional athlete that's right in front of you? Don't be shy, man. Talk to him. Talk to the talk to the mic. Use his mic. Yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. 
I truly don't know what to ask you. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. Don't matter. The first thing that comes to your mind, man. Keep it clean. <laughs> PG. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I know you had dreams. You know, you talk about you want to play pro ball. You know, you know, talk. You know, ask him. You know, he went through it. He did it. Pick his brain. Anything you want to ask him. You've been waiting to meet him. Yeah, don't don't, don't get camera shy, brother. If you don't say it now, we can talk about it later. So. Yeah, we gonna come back to Noah's question. Right. I got you, young brother. It's all good. Baby. Giles will be back. Yeah, I'll be back, <laughs> boss. It's all good. But yeah, I just wanted to introduce the world, or you know, all the all the followers, you know, to the young boy Noah. Listen out for that name. Ten years from now, y'all gonna be like, wow, I remember seeing him on the Wilkins way. Ah. You you seen him here first. Yeah. Very talented brother, football, basketball. He does his thing. But Giles, man, it was a pleasure having you on I tonight. Appreciate you, thank you. A true pleasure. I thank you for coming appreciate out, you, brother. You. You always good know. having you. you. The young you. Jersey man, you know, Alrighty. brother that always comes back, gives back to the Alrighty. community, to the youth. Jersey you know, a stand-up boy. guy, and to be able to kick it with him, and and you know, him shedding knowledge, him shedding light. It's a true honor and a privilege, and you know. That's how we do. We, we spread love. It's the Wilkins way. Mm -hmm. I'm Sean Wilkins. Giles, before we get out of here, almost forgot, plug your um your Instagram. Let the people know where they can follow you. Oh, okay. Well, you know. Uh, we got Giles Tucker on Facebook. You know. I'm just me, 5-5 five, five for that Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> get it out there. <laughs> you know. Get it out there. But uh, other than that, yeah, those are the only things I got on social media. Um, just come follow me whenever. Hit me up. Any questions, let's do this. And uh, you guys know where you can reach me. I'm Sean Wilkins, Facebook. Instagram is Wilkins, W-I-L-K-I-N-S underscore way. And I always, you know, I always put up, you know, upcoming videos, upcoming episodes that I'm going to have. So tune in, follow me. I show, I share pictures and, you know, the whole experience. You can see what it's all about. It's the Wilkins way. I'm Sean Wilkins for Giles Tucker. Yes, sir. We'll see you next time. All right.